Hey guys, we are here. We're gonna make some more paper. Woo! <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I've got my um, tray that I use to do acrylic pouring in on the table. But just in case I get extra sloppy, it'll help contain some of the mess. Um, this is um, the tray, kind of a tray that goes underneath a washing machine in case your washing machine overflows to catch some of the water. Although I have to say it's not very deep, so I think if your washing machine overflowed, um, yeah, this wouldn't catch a lot of water, but it's great for art. Um, I also um, am going to be using a dish pan from the dollar store. And I've got a bucket of water just off camera that way. Of course, my Ninja Blender, um, my paper making screen, and um, some cookie sheets to dry the paper on on my drying rack. And I've got different kinds of pulp, if you will. So we've got chopped up um, junk mail envelopes. No plastic windows, of course, because we're making paper, right? So you want, don't want anything with plastic on it. I have, um, this is from, these are a couple of coffee filters from the um, paint water bucket in the other room. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in the description below. These are some various um, cellulose pulp fibers, some paint chips, and things like that. Although I do see a piece of metal in there, and that would be bad to have go in the blender. Yep, we don't want that in the blender. Not sure how that ended up in there, but anyway. Um, and then, of course, I have our pine cone pulp that we made before. And I also have some of this sort of very cellulose-y, cardboardy packaging material. You guys have probably seen this if you've gotten any kind of um, like IKEA furniture deliveries or anything like that. It you know looks like this. It's kind of the kind of st same stuff I think that like drink holders are made out of from the fast food restaurants. So I've got some of that too. The first thing we're going to do is take out the bottom of our Ninja Blender. And I'm going to put some of my pine cone pulp in there. I'm just like guesstimating. I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe that's like a quarter cup. And then I'm going to put some water in there. It's about a cup of water. And we're going to just let that sit for just a minute. And we're going to let that pine cone pulp sort of absorb some water and get a little softer than I know it already is. So I'm going to let it sit for about five minutes or so and I'll be right back. Okay, it's been, I don't know, six minutes or so. I watched a friend's YouTube video. Um, <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of my junk mail paper and then I'm going to add one piece of this weird cardboard packaging stuff. We're going to like break it up. So it's, the smaller you can break the things up, the um, easier it's going to be for whatever you're using to chop your pulp up. Now, because we're working on my acrylic pouring thing, I actually don't need to necessarily dip into my paint chip jar because <laughs> this thing's got paint all over it and I can just pull up a few chips. So we'll do that for now. Okay. Put the blender lid on and let's do some blending. Maybe. We need power first. There we go. Electricity helps. Okay, I think it's probably blended enough, but I guess we'll find out. I've got one of my silicone painty scraper tools things. To scrape some of the pulp off the lid. Okay. There might still be some big chunks in there. The pine cone, um, pine cones, as I we said before, are kind of hard to um, chop up. And we're gonna put our tray over. And I'm going to pour, oops, majority of the pulp out. Spread 
cut it out. I need some more water to spread the pulp out. It's a little bit dry. Plus there's still some pulp in the container. So I am, I added some more water. I'm gonna scrape it down. There we go. I'm gonna lay this in the dish pan. And You can always tell when you don't have enough water because then it's hard to spread the pulp out. I'm no expert with making paper. Let me say that. I've said it, I said it in the other video. It's been, up until recently, it was like 20 years since I made paper, so. There's lots of YouTube videos and there's probably better ways to do things. This is just how I'm doing it. I'm gonna rest it on the edge of the dish, dish pan. And I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna put this on. And I'm pushing. I should probably do it this way. I'm trying really hard not to make a mess as I'm doing this, which is really funny because paper making is very messy. So there's our first sheet of paper. Now the trick is to get it to transfer to here. So I just need to push down on one end and get it to, with a sponge and basically get it to release from this sheet. And then it goes into here and I can put this on my drying rack to let it dry. I am going to make some more paper. So um, what I'm gonna do is take what's in here and put it in here. I'll add some more bits and pieces that I have next to me on the table.
Okay, we got 11 sheets of paper made. I did um, use up one, I had one in a partial jar of the pine cone pulp and I used up one jar, um, which is fine. I live next to the woods. I got plenty of access to pine cones. Um, the painty um, blob bits jar is a little low, but that tray is covered in painty blobby bits, and I think I have more like paint skins around here somewhere, so I'll be adding some of those to this jar at some point. Um, the um, scrap paper, junk paper, pulp jar is like almost empty, so I went in my husband's office, and um, he pays, he has the bill paying thing in there. Let's be honest, I try not to pay the bills, I let him do it. Um, and I just get all the envelopes um, without the plastic windows or I cut off the plastic window and then I just chop them up into this to smaller pieces so they'll fit this into this jar and it's less work for the um, Ninja Blender to cut up so I try to keep these on hand for paper making and keep these jars full um, I don't, you know, make 50 sheets at a time or anything. I just make like 11 or 12 pages at a time. 12 if I have a, another spare sheet, but usually I can just do 11. That's how many um, cookie sheet spaces I have to dry things on. Oop! <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Um, some of the last few bits of paper, these two included, and get that off of there without messing up the paper. Ooh. I put some glitter in. There we go. Um, and um, that's going to be really fun um, when it dries. So as I said before, uh, when it dries, I will be adding um, some of this paper to the Etsy shop. So you can um, check the link from my shop in my link tree link below. Um, it, I live next to the woods, so as it warms up, right now it's still a bit rainy and cold outside, I will be collecting other things to try to make paper with, like flowers, um, now that things are starting to, just starting to bloom, so I'll be collecting and drying flowers, maybe some pine tree needles, um, things from nature to add not only make paper from, but to add to some of these other things like the junk mail envelopes that we would normally throw away and um, make um, paper from them. Paper we can use in our mixed media projects, we can use to make a tag or a card. Um, it's not really the kind of paper that you write on. I suppose you could try, but it's pretty rough paper, which is why, what I like. Um, hang on one I wanted to dig these two out for you. These are the first two pa pieces of pine cone paper I made. And this gives you a rough idea of what it's like when it dries. It shrinks up just a little bit, lightens up kind of a lot, actually. But it's a rough textured paper. Um, you could write on it, it'd be difficult though. Um, you could paint on it, but I wouldn't recommend doing like watercolor or anything, maybe acrylic paint. But it, you could definitely glue to it and use it um, in your uh, glue projects, collage projects. Again, make a tag out of it, something like that. Um, I really think it's cool. So I'll be making more of that for my own stash, but also again to sell in the Etsy shop. I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do um, in the way of making your own unique art supplies. That's kind of the whole purpose of this little series that we're gonna be doing, um, is exploring making our own supplies and our own materials to make works of art with and to make projects with and to use in our art journals um, without buying necessarily a lot of store-bought stuff and using what we have. Um, so I hope this gives you some ideas. If you want links to my Etsy shop or anything else, follow me on social media, support the free content here on YouTube. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Click on my link tree link in the description below. You'll find my Etsy shop, my Patreon, my Amazon store, where to buy my book, like there's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, my Instagram, my Twitter, all that stuff. So click on that and check it out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon if you want notifications of future videos. And the most important thing, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.